The Holy Gospel according to Mark, the ninth chapter. John said to Jesus, Teacher, we saw someone casting out demons in your name and we tried to stop him because he was not following us. But Jesus said, Do not stop him. For no one who does a deed of power in my name will be able soon afterward to speak evil of me. Whoever is not against us is for us. For truly, I tell you, whoever gives you a cup of water to drink because you bear the name of Christ will by no means lose the reward. If any of you put a stumbling block before one of these little ones who believe in me, It would be better for you if a great millstone were hung around your neck and you were thrown into the sea. If your hand causes you to stumble, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life maimed than to have two hands and to go to hell to the unquenchable fire. And if your foot causes you to stumble, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life lame than to have two feet and to be thrown into hell. And if your eye causes you to stumble, tear it out. It is better for you to enter the kingdom of God with one eye than to have two eyes and to be thrown into hell. Where their worm never dies and the fire is never quenched. For everyone will be salted with fire. Salt is good, but if salt has lost its saltiness, how can you season it? Have salt in yourselves and be at peace with one another. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. Sometimes you can't see the forest for the trees. At least that's what I've heard. There are ways in which we can get so caught up in focusing on the trees, the the specifics, that we can't see the big picture. And oftentimes, whenever we're reading scripture, sometimes something within that scripture, that one verse that kind of captures our imagination and raises all kinds of questions and causes us all kinds of concerns where we could get so hung up on that one little bit, that fragment, that we lose sight of the larger picture of what's being communicated in the story being told. And today is one of those days, isn't it? There's plenty of trees to get focused on that can cause us to struggle to see the big picture of what's happening. In fact, some of you have heard me tell the story about um, my history preaching this gospel reading. The first time I had the privilege to preach it was while I was in my internship year. And uh, as I wrestled with the gospel reading through the week, and I, I had some moments when I was really confronted by some of what was going on in it, that's a long story, we won't go into it today, I decided that the best way to handle this gospel reading was to preach from the second reading, from James. And I was all set. I was all set with the sermon. I was all set with the children's time. I was going to focus on how the prayer of the faithful is powerful and effective. It was a wonderful sermon. It was a wonderful children's time. And so in that congregation, we read the gospel reading and then we invited the children forward. Well, there was this one young man Maybe in first or second grade, he was the kind of child who never quite looked like he was paying attention to anything that was going on in worship. And so I read the gospel reading and I invited the children to come forward and I sat down on the front step 
and he somehow, from the very back row, managed to be the first child to get up there and sit down next to me, and he had questions. Intern Dave, what does Jesus mean that I should cut off my hand or cut off my foot or pluck out my eye? That pesky Holy Spirit. All of a sudden, everything that I had planned, well, I had to go a different direction. You see, one of the things that I have learned is that when we encounter difficult texts like this, that many times what we want to do is to avoid it, to go a different direction, to go look for something else. But indeed, what the Holy Spirit does is keep bringing us around relentlessly until we get to that point where we have to sit with it and wrestle with it and listen for what God is intending to speak to us. And today is a day when it is awfully easy to get caught up in staring at the trees and miss the forest. You may recall that this comes right after that second passion prediction. You know, where Jesus tells the disciple what's going, the disciples what's going to happen in Jerusalem when they get there. That he's going to be betrayed, and he's going to be crucified, and he's going to die, and on the third day he will be raised. And of course, we know this from Mark's gospel, the disciples don't get it. They don't understand. And so what they do, because they don't understand, is they start arguing about who's going to be the greatest among them. That leads to a teaching moment. It leads to Jesus teaching the disciples that those who wish to be first need to be last and servant of all. And he frames things in a way that turns everything upside down and inside out. It's right after that that John comes to report to Jesus, we saw a guy who is doing deeds of power in your name, and he isn't one of our followers. He's not part of our group. He's not part of our inner circle. And so I told him to stop it. Now, I can imagine that John was pretty proud of himself because he's protecting the inner circle. He's protecting the way things ought to be. And Jesus, well, Jesus says, no. Nobody who does things in my name will soon afterwards be able to, to curse me, to say bad things about me. Let him try me on. Huh? to see if this fits, if this works, if it's right. Then Jesus goes on to say that if you put a stumbling block in front of one of these little ones, and, and oftentimes we think of them as children, but if you think of the little ones as people who are new to faith, people who don't have a lot of experience with Jesus, people who are trying on Jesus for the first time to see if it might fit. I find myself thinking of somebody who is newly baptized. Later today, we will be baptizing Benjamin Tistammer, a child. And, and one of the things that we do as a congregation is we give the newly baptized in this congregation a quilt that they may be wrapped in Christ. That this quilt that has been crafted by the quilters of this congregation as a, as a gift may be a sign of God's love that wraps them up. The children are called the little ones of faith, the newbies, are called to put on Christ. And Jesus says when somebody is putting on Christ, when somebody is trying this on, 
when they are seeing what it does for them, don't be putting a stumbling block in front of them. And that's where we get into the scary stuff. Because if you put a stumbling block in front of somebody, a little one, somebody new to the faith, then it would be better for you. That whole thing of tying you to a millstone and throwing you into the sea, that was a form of capital punishment at that time. And then Jesus goes on and says, we need to take this very seriously. In fact, the metaphors are pretty clear. <laughs> They're also pretty hyperbolic, right? They're exaggerated. But what, what Jesus does is he takes fairly normal punishments for crimes in that day and proceeds to use them as examples. If there is any part of you that is causing you to turn away from God, causing you to sin, you need to distance yourself from that part of you. You need to cut yourself off from it. Is he talking about literally plucking out eyes and cutting off hands? I'm going to suggest no. And I'm also going to suggest that each and every one of us knows parts of ourselves that, that invite us to turn away from God and from God's ways. And what Jesus does in this moment is calls us to pay attention to those ways that we tend to turn away from God and God's ways and distance ourselves from those parts. Embrace the parts of us that encourage us to reach out to God. But that isn't where Jesus stops this teaching. He goes on to say that everyone, everyone will be salted by fire. And that fire is indeed one of the two ways to that you purify things. You realize that for those things that can't stand up to fire... They used water to purify. But for those things that can stand up to fire, well, you use heat. And what Jesus says is that everyone will be salted by fire. What that suggests is, guess what? By God's grace, you can stand the heat. You may not like it much but you can stand the heat and that God is already acting in you to give you all that you need. And more than that, God is calling you to be salt for others who help preserve them, help to strengthen them, help to bring them to trust in God's grace who walk with those little ones as they try on Christ and show them God's love, God's grace, God's forgiveness, the life that comes through Jesus Christ. And so today, indeed, there is plenty of forest for us to pay attention to, but I invite us not to get caught up in looking at the trees but rather see that just as Jesus last week was talking about there not being insiders and outsiders, but rather that we recognize that there are those who are struggling to come to understanding and faith. And those are ones who need us to walk with them. That we not be ones who throw down stumbling blocks but rather show them God's grace and God's love and God's forgiveness that we have received through Jesus Christ.